Snow Beast is a made-for-TV movie from 1977 featuring a small-town ski resort and Bigfoot. The film starts out with two skiers going down the mountain, but we know what's going to happen, and sure enough, one of them gets killed by the beast. This starts the film off well enough, and we know what we're in for. Lots of POV shots from Bigfoot, and a ton of skiing. Next, we find out that the town's winter festival is coming up, and we are introduced to two of the main characters, Tony and Carrie Rill. Carrie is the owner of the ski resort and is played by Sylvia Sidney. You may recognize her from her role in Beetlejuice, if not by her face, then definitely by her voice. But uh, you hot doggers will be judged on grace and originality, not on your audacity. Tony. Tony is Carrie's grandson and is played by Robert Logan. Robert was able to build a successful career acting, mostly in TV shows and small parts, however he is definitely the weak leak in this movie, tending to overreact and yell when the scene doesn't call for it. This wasn't an animal. If it had seen it, it had told me. I'm talking about one of our guests. Tony takes a small team to go looking for the missing skier, whose name is Jennifer. He finds her things, but no body. This is where we get our first glimpse at what the snow beast looks like. However, you're gonna have to pause the movie to see it. Next, we are introduced to the other main characters of the film, Gar and Helen Seberg, played by Bo Stevenson and Yvette Mimiu. Gar was once an Olympic skier, but now needs a job. Gar, Helen, and Tony all have history, so Gar hopes that he can find work at the ski resort as a ski instructor. There's only one problem. Gar doesn't want to be a washed out athlete, so he's afraid to ski again. Well, it's nice to feel wanted somewhere. About 15 minutes in, you really start to notice some of the similarities to Jaws, just with Bigfoot in a ski resort instead of a shark in the ocean. For example, the ski resort owner is a lot like the mayor in Jaws. The big winter festival is coming up just like the 4th of July weekend in Jaws, and the person in charge doesn't want to cancel for fear that they will lose money. Also at this point, you realize that most of this movie is going to be people on snowmobiles and people skiing. We see a rescue worker looking for Jennifer. He takes a hard fall and becomes Bigfoot's next victim. A boy finds Jennifer's body in a barn where Bigfoot is keeping his kills. What's the matter, son? What's the matter? Speak up. Inside. The water trough. Oh my. Oh. A subplot develops and we learn some of the history between Tony and Helen. Helen loved Tony and Gar. She went with Gar and is now regretting it. Tony is openly flirting with Helen, even confessing that he has always loved her, and all the while Gar watches and doesn't seem to really care. Well, as I see the problem, Doctor, you're still in love with the man. If only I could fall out of love with him, it'd be so much easier. You know, marriage can survive a lot of things, but it can't survive lack of respect. And I've lost about all the respect I ever had for him. I need a nap. Wait a minute. You know what you need? You need to have someone say he loves you. And I do, you know. I always have. You know, kissing my wife in public. Jimmy, are you looking for me? 
No. Sheriff Paraday needs to see Tony right away. You have any idea where he might be? No, I haven't. <laughs> well, Ellen, it seems as if both our men are missing. Something wrong? Nothing you want to hear about. And look, I got to get right back out there. As soon as he shows up, will you tell him the sheriff wants him to come right out to the old Fairchild farm? Helen hears about some activity at the barn, and being a reporter, decides to check it out and see if she can get a story. When she gets to the barn, she finds footprints and decides to follow them. Meanwhile, Gar, Tony, and the sheriff meet at the barn and find the body of Jennifer. After seeing this, they decide that they need to hunt down and kill the creature. Whatever did that wasn't even halfway human. Next, we see people preparing for the Winter Festival. Thankfully, Bigfoot crashes the party, killing another and causing some chaos. It's at this point you really start to get that it was made for TV. You can tell when there was meant to be commercials. We always see a fade to red for a commercial break. It wouldn't be too bad of an effect, but they use it all the time. Gar finally decides that it would be a good idea to try to ski again. I guess because he knows he's going to have to, being on a ski resort and all. So if you haven't gotten enough of people skiing, <laughs> then you're in luck, because he hits the slopes. While Gar is out getting his confidence again, he finds another barn where he finds his wife, who had become lost after following the footprints in the snow. Helen is proud to see Gar skiing again and their love is rekindled. Oh, I was so terrified. Oh, you, thank God. You know you scared a hand out of me. Oh. <laughs> yeah? I'm proud of you. I'm sorry I let us drift so far apart. Well, we both kind of let that happen. The next morning, they wake up to Bigfoot attacking the barn. After some fighting to get in, he is scared away by Tony and the sheriff on their snowmobiles. The police think they shot what has been causing all the killings. I couldn't believe one of those things would be out in the winter. Yeah, I'm amazed. Well, there's some shot, huh? Everyone goes out to take a look, but it's just a bear. Once again, it's just like Jaws. When they think they have the shark that's doing all the killings, they find out it's not. They even suggest cutting open the bear, just like they did the shark in Jaws, to see what's in its stomach. Gar and Helen are able to convince the sheriff that perhaps it wasn't a bear causing all the killings, and a team sets out again to hunt the creature. What you're saying is you, uh... You want us to go up there, just the two of us, and destroy this thing. That's right. Just the three of us. Just the four of us. Everybody ready? Perhaps it's just from already seeing everyone riding around on snowmobiles and skiing, but your eyes really start to wander at this point, and you realize that Colorado has some very nice scenery.
Bigfoot knocks over some logs and destroys the camper, killing the sheriff. Oh, are you hurt? The group retreats, only to head back later to arm themselves and have the final showdown with the creature. Tony shoots at it, injuring the Bigfoot, and Gar chases after. Gar, finish him! Out of ammunition, Gar must use his ski pole to kill the creature. And of course, we have to have that final red scene of the movie. All in all, Snow Beast is an average, low-budget Bigfoot movie. You don't see Bigfoot hardly at all, again, much like how you don't see the shark in Jaws that much, but you have to give credit to the cast and crew, as you can tell they are really out there in the cold. Apparently, the weather was rarely above 5 degrees while filming, and that does give it that authentic ski resort feel. But we are here to see Bigfoot, and the movie just doesn't deliver. Like so many other movies, they tried to stretch out an hour-long story into an hour and a half by filling scenes with skiers and snowmobiles. All in all, I give Snow Beast two out of four red screens. <laughs>